All right, I believe it's go time. I believe we're on here and ready to go. Uh, and it is Wednesday, December the 7th. Uh, and man, what a what a great day uh, it's going to be, man. We'll get to be in church tonight. Look forward to that. That'll be at 6 o'clock. I uh, always look forward uh, to that. As we said, today is December 7th. And as you know, December 7th, 1941. Uh, kind of um, uh, really... Uh, as we know, we're, uh, the United States was attacked by Japan, Pearl Harbor was attacked and all that, and really kind of uh, the U.S. got into World War II and all that. And so uh, today's kind of, as, as we know and as we've heard, it's a day that will live in infamy, uh, as we uh, know from history and, uh, and from, st from studying all of that. And, uh, man, just uh, think about these dates, these special dates, I guess, these dates that remind us, really, uh, that our freedom isn't free. Uh, and we also recognize the fact that uh, that there's so many people uh, that that sacrifice their lives, the best years of their lives, for our freedom. Uh, and today's just one of those days which we remember uh, our freedom, remember the the price that was paid for our freedom. There's a lot of dates like that uh, here in the U.S. and uh, and also you think about. Uh, some of the things that we uh, that we recognize now, or even in Christianity, obviously we've got a few days on the calendar that we that we uh, look back to. We know Christmas, where Jesus uh, sacrificed, or, or not sacrificed, but stepped out of heaven uh, and uh, became a baby and lived upon this earth uh, for 33 years. We know that Easter, we recognize that uh, the day that Jesus rose from the dead we know also the day that he the day that he died we recognize that day as well so we we've, we've, we've got days in our life that uh, cause us to pause cause us to remember uh, and uh, oftentimes those days cause us to be thankful uh, and this is one of those days i think is uh, yes we uh, it's sad knowing uh, so many lost their lives but you know what it's it's also a day for us to remember that how good we've got it to remember how, how the sacrifice for our freedom. And so uh, take some time today uh, and uh, just thank the Lord for all that he's done for us. Thank the Lord for this great country that we live in. Okay, we are in Job chapter number 12. As uh, I've already said, don't forget, man, tonight it's going to be a great night. We look forward to being in God's house. Adults, we're going to continue to study. Uh, we're going to continue to study Nehemiah this evening. Uh, and looking at really another challenge uh, that Nehemiah has as he's building the wall uh, and look forward to looking at that challenge and how it applies to our life and uh, how we can overcome challenges in our life to live in victory. And then uh, also don't forget the rock tonight as well. It's going to be a good time uh, in the church. Okay, Job chapter number 12. Uh, as you're on, I'm going to apologize for yesterday and so sorry I didn't get to uh, connect with the Many of you who commented, and so uh, please forgive me on that note. Uh, I love uh, reading those comments live and checking in with everybody live. Sorry I wasn't able to do that yesterday. Hopefully, be able to do that this morning. Okay, here we go. Job chapter number 12. Job here is answering uh, his friends, uh, and I guess not answering, but really uh, uh, kind of defending himself and uh, and really pointing people to pointing his friends to the Lord and and all of that and and we'll look at that here uh, this morning. Uh, Job chapter twelve and verse number seven. Job kind of turns his conversation from that which we talked about yesterday. Job was was kind of confronting his friends and really defending himself. Now he goes to on the. Uh, I don't want to say the offensive, but he goes and begins to talk about the Lord and who God is, the greatness of God, really God's power, uh, and really the fact that God is in control. Uh, and Job is uh, showing that to his friends or communicating that to his friends in, in the, the rest of the remaining uh, time of this chapter. So we're going to look at uh, maybe a few verses here uh, as we consider it. Verse number 7 says, But ask now the beast, and they shall teach thee, and the fowls of the air, and they shall tell thee, or speak to the earth, and it shall teach thee. And the fishes of the sea shall declare unto thee, who knoweth not in all these that, in all these that the hand of the Lord hath wrought this. Now, you think about what Job is saying here. He's uh, he's focusing his friends upon upon the creation. Okay, uh, and he says to his friends, "Hey, the beast shall teach thee, the fowl of the air they shall tell thee." Speak to the earth, it shall teach thee, and fish of the sea shall declare unto thee. Uh, and, and you look at what 
what Job is saying here, Job is saying, man, you look at this, what God has created, uh, the, the animals. And you know what? They, uh, they can teach us. What do they teach us? They teach us about who God is. Uh, they teach us and, and, and declare God's handiwork. It declares that there is a creator uh, and that uh, God is in control. You look at verse 9. Excuse me, sorry about that. Who knoweth not in all these that the hand of the Lord hath wrought this? Okay? Uh, and what he's saying, man, these animals, creatures, God's creation declares and screams creator that God is in control, that God has created these things. You continue in verse number 10. In whose hand is the soul of every living thing and the breath of all mankind? Uh, and Job now says, not only, yes, God created things, but you know what? He didn't just create things and let it go. Uh, he's still in control. He didn't, uh, and uh, you can go back to Genesis chapter number 1, where the Bible says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Uh, and there, there are some that believe in, in, the, in, in this uh, idea that God created uh, everything and then it, then, uh, or not everything, but God started it and then everything evolved after that. Uh, there are people that believe that. There are people that believe that, man, the, the, the six days that God created the earth, they aren't 24-hour days, but rather they represent uh, years of time and billions of years of time. And throughout that, things evolved, and that's how we got everything that we've got today. Uh, we know that, that the animals declare, just in their creation and, and what they do, creator. We read in verse number 10, Job then says, you know what? All life comes from God. It says, in whose hand is the soul of every living thing and the breath of all mankind. Now, what does that mean? Okay. It means that every life is special. That when God, when God gives life at that moment of conception, that life is precious in whose hand is the soul of every living thing. Okay. Uh, and then it says, the breath of all mankind. So not only is God the giver of life, but God is the one uh, that that will end the life as well. You see, we, we see throughout Scripture really the power of God as God has God raised individuals from the dead. What does that mean? That God, God is above his creation. Yes, God gives life. Yes, God chooses when life ends. But you know what? God, God could, if he wanted to, God could raise us up. And you know what? In the future, we know that when Jesus comes back, he's going to raise uh, the dead bodies up uh, and uh, uh, raise the believers up. And, and we know that, okay? Uh, and we, we've seen that in Scripture, how Jesus rose from the dead. We find when uh, uh, we find Lazarus uh, and so on, even some examples in the Old Testament where God is, uh, God is above his creation. Uh, and that's something that we need to always remember, the, the power and awesomeness of our God. Sometimes sometimes I think we take the Lord for granted. We don't recognize how great he is and how powerful he is. Man, we need to do that. It's almost like, and, and this is just an example. This doesn't measure up to God uh, at all. Uh, man, there was a one time I was uh, uh, got to meet uh, Bob Welch. Bob Welch is a pitcher. Uh, in the major leagues, he pitched for the A's and for the Dodgers, and man, I got to meet him, uh, and man, it was so cool, okay? Uh, he got us tickets uh, uh, for a ball game once, and then uh, he uh, he invited us, uh, my pastor and him were, were friends, and he invited us down to his house. Man, we got to go to Bob Welch's house, and that was so cool, uh, and after the game went down there, man, it's late at night, and uh, and Bob Welch, he's like, hey, do you guys want to eat? Uh, I'm making I'm making spaghetti, and uh, uh, I don't know if we really wanted to eat, but we you know what Bob Welch made the spaghetti, so man, we're gonna go eat, okay? Uh, and so we man, we had uh, we had some spaghetti, and he says, hey guys, hey, let's go uh, let's go fishing. It was like two o'clock at night, man. He's like, let's go fishing. We're like, man, it's two o'clock at night, man. We need to get home, all that kind of stuff. But you know what? It was Bob Welch, and so we're like, man, yeah, we're gonna go fishing with you, man. We're gonna hang out with you as long as can, man. You're Bob Welch, man. It's awesome. You know, sometimes. Uh, we take for granted the awesomeness of our God. And I know that that's just kind of a silly story, but man, the, the privilege that we have 
to communicate with the Lord. The privilege that we have to have a personal relationship with Him, the Creator of the universe, the giver of life, uh, and man, we get to have a personal relationship with Him. We get to step into His throne room. Now, think about this. As I look back in that story I just kind of told you, that was just a quick rundown, okay? Man, it was exciting. Man, like, man, we get to hang out with Him. Think about now the Lord. Are you excited to spend time with the Lord? Are you excited to open His, his Word and read it and study it? Are you excited about the fact that, yes, we have church tonight at 6 o'clock? Are you excited about the opportunity that you get to spend uh, in the Lord's house? Yeah, are, are you excited about being able to spend time with God's people? Does that bring in excitement and enthusiasm? Yeah, we get excited about a lot of things and pumped off by a lot of things. But you know what? There's nothing more exciting than your personal relationship with the Lord. And so, man, hey, let's let's make sure that we remember who God is and what he's done for us. Now, verse number 11, let's see if we can get maybe one or two more verses in. Uh, I'd like to maybe get three in. It says, verse number 11, Doth not the ear try words? Okay, don't we hear uh, the words that are spoken and the mouth taste his meat? Uh, and we know that, that, that God has created us uh, with purpose here. You think about uh, our ears. They're meant to hear. Uh, our mouth is meant to eat. And so each part of our body, our being, has a purpose. Uh, and we are to use use the, each part of our being uh, for that purpose. And, and it just kind of reminds me, and we may have to end here today. It also reminds me of the body of Christ. The believers, if you know Christ, your personal Savior, you're a part of the body of Christ. Uh, and are you fulfilling God's purpose in your life? Okay, not uh, not everybody can do everything. Okay, not uh, not everybody is uh, is gifted in certain uh, certain ways. You know, not everybody can be a pastor. Uh, not everybody can be a Sunday school teacher. Not everybody can be a deacon. Not everybody can be in the choir. Not everybody can work in junior church. Not everybody can be a nursery. Not, not everybody can uh, can uh, take care of the outside, the landscape, and so on. Not everybody can do that. Uh, but you know what? Uh, we got, we can all do a little something. Uh, and uh, uh, sometimes uh, there are people that, man, they can teach Sunday school. Yeah, they can lead music. Yeah, they can be in the choir. Yeah, they can uh, uh, usher. Yeah, they can uh, walk up to somebody and just talk to them. And, and people are gifted that way. Uh, and, man, they can just uh, have a conversation with somebody. And, uh, and, man, but everybody can do a couple of things. Everybody can pray. Everybody can be an encouragement. Uh, and, and everybody can be a blessing. You know, man, that's what we ought to try to be. And, and yes, we're talented and gifted differently, but man, we all have purpose. Uh, and, and man, it is imperative that we are faithful to God's house. Wherever you're watching from, if you don't have a church that you regularly attend, you are missing out. You need to find a church that you can regularly attend so that you can be fed the Word of God, so that you can enjoy the fellowship with the people of God, so that you can, not just so that others can be an encouragement to you, but, man, you can be an encouragement and blessing to others. That's why uh, we're not to be forsaken the assembling of ourselves together. We gather to worship. We gather to grow. We gather to encourage. Uh, and man, uh, we need to make sure that we are faithful to the Lord's house for those reasons. Uh, and there are many others as well, but those are just kind of the general broad ones. Uh, and man, we need to make sure uh, that we are fulfilling God's purpose, that we're being a part of the body of Christ. Uh, and man, we're doing what God has called us to do and what God has gifted us to do. Okay, and there's man, we could spend days uh, uh, on uh, on this thought, but we're not going to. We're going to kind of end there today. We didn't get as far as what I wanted, but uh, man, there's some great truth in there, uh, and so let's make sure uh, that we're fulfilling God's purpose for our life uh, and living for Him in a great way. Okay, now let me give a couple shout outs to those who are watching uh, watching live, and I thank you so much for being on this morning. Thanks for coming back, even though it ended so abruptly yesterday. And uh, glad that uh, uh, glad that you came back today. 
Uh, if you have not already done so, I want to encourage you to share our Power Up so that others can uh, can watch later on throughout the day. I know we're kind of close to the end here, uh, but share so that uh, others can watch and listen. All right, Lynette, good morning to you. I uh, hope you have a great day. Uh, Cliff and Karen, good morning to you. Uh, and uh, man, hope you got all that. Uh, hope you got all that snow shoveled uh, uh, today. Uh, or yesterday even, okay? Uh, and then uh, Brian and Cindy have an awesome day today as well. Uh, Barnett's, good morning to you. Hope you guys have a great day. And Ingrid, good morning to you. Love you. Have an awesome day. Jean, thank you so much for being on. Have a wonderful day. Viv, good morning to you. Merry Christmas to you. And miss you all in California as well. Uh, David, uh, thank you so much for being on. Good morning to you. Uh, and Dennis Geraldine, have an awesome day. Uh, and we'll see you tonight as well at The Rock. Look forward to it. All right. Uh, that uh, brings us uh, uh, to the end of our time together today. Uh, Lord willing, we'll see you tonight. Don't forget our power up tomorrow uh, at 830 as we continue to walk through the book of Job. Have an awesome day, everybody.